Hi everyone. Um, I'm sitting on my porch in San Diego. Um, it's really beautiful outside. It's pretty hot inside though. So this is my um, dreaded book release video. <laughs> um, I have a book. It's coming out next week is the release date. The pub date is next Tuesday. And I've been waiting and waiting for my copies to come and they've just been lost in the mail and all my friends are getting theirs and everyone's writing to me about it and um, <laughs> I've been hassling my publisher like writing them not pesky emails I don't think but um, just emails <laughs> saying I want my book so anyways um, this box came today from Alice James, so I'm assuming that books are inside, and I'm going to open them. I mean, it feels weird. I want to tell you about the first book that I ever published, which was also with Alice James, actually, in 2005, called The Far Moss. So it was 15 years ago, about this time of year, too. It came out in October as well. And, um, I don't know, I was living in Beacon, New York at the time, and I felt really not ambiguous about the book. I was super excited about it, but I definitely felt like something was going to change in my life when I saw the book and when the book was in the world with my work. Not just like, um, not just my life, my material life, or like being able to get an academic position or that kind of life, but something about my like spiritual life as a poet was going to change as well, in a sense. Like the period of time of some kind of relationship to poetry as an innocent or a new person was actually threatened in some way by the actuality of a book. I mean, it's like, you know, Emily Dickinson had the same fear and. I don't think it's super unusual, but it was uncalled for because that book was actually a passport for me into the rooms full of poets and meeting these amazing people. And it's just, it started me on this incredible journey. And so in a certain way, it's been kind of amazing to come back to Alice James for this new book. Um, but that did, first day in Beacon, when I got the copy of the book, I literally, it was a single copy, it wasn't a box. And I just threw it in the back seat of my car and I drove around all day teaching classes. We were already doing night boat books at that time and I was, you know, we were running it out of the, my apartment. There was no office or anything like that. And so I was going to the post office and doing all of these errands. It was just kind of ridiculous, actually. Um, and I finally opened it at the end of the day and of course it was really beautiful. So, so I'm glad to be doing this with you now. This is like a strange strange little book. It's about precisely the moment that we're in. It's about Sheila Chandra, a singer who can no longer sing. It's about David Berger, an athlete who was killed. Uh, it's about Muhammad Al Khatib, who is an ath athlete who was couldn't train and how was challenged to be able to train. Um, and it's about how we live past these things. How do we contend with the history and the world that we're living in now? And just earlier today on our street, there was uh, some men picked up by the border police, the ICE people. And my partner went out there and was like, you know, checking in with the men and giving, giving the policemen the business, you know, saying like, why are you he said, go arrest the president. <laughs> Why are you arresting these men? Go deport the president, you know? So um, I feel like we're in such a time that we need art to, to answer hard questions for us. And I think that's what I tried to do in this book. Let's get it open. I'm not scared.
It is really pretty. Oh, wow. Oh, that is really, it's really pretty. Do you want to see it? Maybe I shouldn't even show it to you. It's so beautiful. Oh. I'll show it to you. How about it? This cover, this is the stained glass window at Yale University, Calhoun College. The students were agitating to have the name of the college changed and the university was saying no and there was a dining hall worker in the dining room of the college and this was a stained window, stained glass window depicting enslaved laborers, enslaved people. And he broke the window. And the curator, when they received the window for restoration, decided not to restore it. She decided to, she recreated it in the broken state. And that, that's how it exists in the Yale collections now. And that's pretty gorgeous. So she was so beautiful. Thank you, Alice James Books and um, Carrie and Alyssa and Emily. And thanks for putting up with me. And I hope you'll all check this book out. I'm doing a bunch of readings and events from this book. Um, everything's up at my website, www.cosmoali.com slash calendar um, dot html. And it's up there on the website. And my Twitter is at CosmoAliPoet. And I'll put everything up there too. Thanks so much, everybody. I'm going to look at the book now, but I'm going to do that on my own. I'm not going to keep you with me. Thank you.